<sighs> Never forget the clap. I think I forgot it in the last video though. Are you looking for a cheap, high quality point and shoot camera? I got you covered. You know the Canon ELF 360 was my first point and shoot ever? Let's talk specs. Starting off, this thing has 20.2 megapixels. So you got a decent image quality. Uh, not fantastic, not horrible. The Canon SL2 that I'm shooting on right now has 24.6, I believe. Somewhere around there. The image sensor in here is a one over 2.3 inch CMOS sensor. So that means there's gonna be a crop to this, I believe which shouldn't make a big difference because you can't really change out the lenses at all. This tiny guy has a Digic 4 Plus processor. So pretty old processor, but considering the size and the fact that uh, it's no big time, like super expensive camera, um, that's to be expected that it has an old processor. This thing is fitted with a 12 times optical zoom lens I think it goes 25 millimeter to 300 millimeter. Also, the camera can zoom in an extra four times because it has digital zoom inputted into it. This baby's also fitted with image stabilization. So if you're vlogging or anything, gonna be perfect for that. Gonna reduce the amount of shake if you don't have a tripod or just a selfie stick or whatever you're using. The Canon ELF 360 also have some photo effects, uh, which are just like digital filtered in-camera effects. So for example, I think one of them is called the miniature effect uh, and it makes everything look super tiny. Moving on from that, you have white balance and it has all the regular presets like daylight, cloudy, and so on. Also, you can, I think, adjust the Kelvin range on here. So if you want some more particular specific adjustments to the white balance, you can make those adjustments with the Kelvin. Then the aperture on this, it has a range from f3.6 to f7. So not a huge range to play with there, but you do have f3.6, so you're gonna get somewhat of a blurry background if you're looking for that effect. Now the shutter speed on this thing, it has a range from one second all the way up to one two thousandth of a second. So it's pretty quick for a camera this size. And also you have that one second shutter speed if you're looking for a more long exposure. Also it has a long shutter mode to where you can open the shutter up for 15 seconds all the way down to one second. All right, what's up guys? Right now I figured would be the best time to do the low light performance test of the Canon ELPH 360 HS. So tell me what you all think in the comments below. Moving on to light metering. It has the typical Canon light metering. Uh, so spot metering, you have center weighted average metering, and then you got the evaluative. Most people use the evaluative, unless you're looking for a specific effect or specific function. Also included in this is built-in Wi-Fi, so I think you can connect your phone up to it. I've never actually done that with this camera, but it's nice to know that you have that feature if you wanna set it up and then go run and take like a self-portrait or something. Now on to video recording formats. So it has two settings, I believe it has fine and super fine and that just means the image quality so that's talking about the amount of artifact that you see in the image itself fine is going to be more artifacting and super fine is going to show less artifacting and then the resolution it can shoot at 1920 by 1080 and that's at 30 frames per second now as for battery life it can last up to about 180 photos in a row and that can be expandable up to 265 on eco mode 
and it'll last about 40 minutes with uh, shooting video. With all those features packed into this tiny camera, you'd expect it to cost more than what it actually does, and it comes in at a price of $199 on Amazon and $199.99 on Canon's website. Now here's my thoughts on it. Pros, it's lightweight and small, so you can do a lot of run and gun. You don't really need to set much up. You just gotta turn it on and then start shooting. Um, you can put it in your pocket, super light, super tiny. You can store it just about anywhere you can think of. Another thing is it's great for beginners. If you're just starting off in photography or video and you don't know where to look, this is a great camera to start with. If you've never touched a camera, also a great camera to start with. Also, the image stabilization. That's a great feature that was added into this camera. Sometimes you have to search and search and search for that, but just the thought that it's in this camera and if you need to shoot video, it's there for you. Also great for, like I said, vlogging. Another great thing about this camera is that it's somewhat manual. Now what I mean by that is that you can adjust the ISO on here manually and you can also adjust the Kelvins on here manually for a different white balance. Other than that, a lot of the settings are already pre-automatically set for you. Moving on to cons. Starting off, I don't like that this thing only shoots in 30 frames per second. I normally shoot in 24 frames a second, so knowing that this shoots in 30 frames, it just bugs me a little bit, and I know I had to shoot a video a while back and I had to shoot in 30 frames per second on this thing because I was recording this camera. Moving on, um, like I said, this thing's only somewhat manual. Uh, you can't adjust all the settings. So I wish it was completely manual, but that I think that's hard to find in point and shoots if you can find it at all. Another thing is that it's a short battery life. I feel like it doesn't last that long, maybe an hour or two. And also, I wish there was a bigger aperture range to play with. 3.6 to f7 is not much to move around in. With big DSLRs like the one I have, I think I can go, with one of the lenses I have, I can go from f1.8 all the way up to f22, I believe. So I got a huge range there. This thing, not much. So my final thoughts, it offers plenty of options for those first starting out. Um, it's a good picture quality, it's easy to use, and I'd say it's perfect for somebody who's never touched a camera in their life. However, it's not really made for pros. In my opinion, it doesn't allow enough manual options, and the quality in general is just too low. So for all the professionals out there looking for a point and shoot, I would recommend Canon G7X Mark III. That thing allows more manual control, but at that point you're spending around 700 bucks, so I'd just get a DSLR. Something like the Canon SL2 that I'm shooting on right now. I did a video on that uh, recently actually, and I'll link that up above in the cards. All right, now I'm gonna include some footage that I shot with this thing and also some photos. All right guys, that's gonna wrap up the video here. If you're looking to check out the Canon PowerShot ELPH 360HS, I will link it in the description below. If you have any questions about the camera, feel free to comment below too, and I'll answer those the best I can. And if you'd like to see me rant about more tech, click up here to subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.